At Clark University, we attempt to uphold this premise of challenging convention. This idea is inspiring, it's powerful, it's great. However, it becomes too often that we get so caught up in reiterating this motto as a justification for our beliefs and actions. It seems as though in attempts to become as progressive and innovative as we can, we lose sight at important traditions that have grounded our societal framework throughout history. I want to focus on one particular product whose overuse epitomizes the risks of an exponentially growing dependency on technology in the 21st century. I must make it very clear that my intention is to not uh, express some regressive or backward sentiment of the profound breakthroughs of the 20, 21st century. Instead, I attempt to capture the human aspect to technological advancement in a slightly critical way. Nine out of 10 of you might disagree completely with what I'm saying, but my challenge for all of you today is to be willing to be the one out of 10, be willing to take hits from all sides, be willing to be left in open water, because I guarantee you that it is much more challenging than riding the wave of what everyone else is saying. For the next 200 seconds or so, I don't want to just give a talk. I want to establish a relationship, a connection, a bond with all of you so that hopefully you can walk away and not just say that you heard me, but today you met me. My best friend teaches me stuff I didn't know, always listens to what I got to say, helps me talk to girls when I'm feeling shy, goes shopping with me, eats with me, drinks with me. My best friend is a three by five inch piece of illuminated plexiglass that fits ever so conveniently in my American Eagle jean pocket. My best friend is a device, a panacea for all my difficulties connecting me to the world. Yet it is that same sadistic, soul-sucking operating system, that very maniacal manacle of manipulation that drives me further and further away from the faceless units that I see as contacts rather than people. Efficiency, the masses shout. Speed, ease, accessibility. Congratulations, Teen America. We have successfully and economically optimized human interaction and streamlined the art of interpersonal communication skills. Why do exchanges with God's creatures have to be so efficient? Why do relationships have to be quick and easy? How come I can only talk to someone if we both find the time in our neat and color-coded Microsoft Outlook calendars? I don't want to be penciled in. I don't want to be notified that it is your birthday. I want to take the three seconds of mental capacity to learn what it is because heaven forbid we remember something that is within a couple swipes and taps of our iPhones. My fellow silent sufferers, my unknowingly victimized companions, I do not want to live in a world where shaking hands and making eye contact are indicative of antiquity. Where a colored filter on a photo distorts the brief bubble of beauty that is a moment in your complex reality. We're asking a cute coffee shop cashier to grab a burger as a sign of socially unacceptable assertiveness rather than downright courage. And where is the hope when each seam in the fabric of our social being, our direct exchange of passion, emotion, warmth, is continuing to be ripped right under us and is filling the gas tank to some young CEO sports car? I assure you, my endangered adolescent species, that there is one way to avoid the quicksands that are the dangers of our so-called innovative technological breakthroughs. That solution is the search, the struggle. I know we don't want to hear this, but we have to work. It's okay to sweat a little, to push some boundaries and test some limits. Instead of asking Siri where North Dakota is, why don't you ask your librarian for a map? 
instead of finding someone on Facebook, thank you, why don't you search for them in the cafeteria? Instead of rushing to Verizon for that latest upgrade, why don't you save that money for that college degree or leisurely read or, I don't know, a half-decent date with a pretty lady? Because let me tell you guys, pretty soon, Annie's breakfast right around the corner ain't going to cut it. <laughs> we must radically change the nature of the conversation. We must promote initiative, and not just through original Throwback Thursday posts on Instagram. We must inspire leadership without alluding to how many followers we have on Twitter. We must sanctify that ambiguous thing that we call a hookup, because nothing is casual about intimacy, no matter if Tinder suggests otherwise. We must unstick the glue that fastens our eyes to small screens during dialogue because there's nothing that is more repugnant or disrespectful than staring at your phone halfway into a conversation with someone. Instead of fixating your attention on a living being, you pump your focus, your feelings, your freedom on a piece of plastic. I challenge you all today to face the face-to-face -face don't wait with haste and waste the days you can make a change. They want to make a product out of love, but don't buy it. They want to turn our dependency on the cell phone into a drug, so don't try it. I am not a mere stone that skims the surface of your infinite sea of virtual space. Don't confine me. I am a mountain, so why don't you start climbing? Thank you.